raising money for real estate because your ability to raise capital will directly impact how quickly you can scale and how, how much you can actually grow to, like your, your limit. Everybody has a wall and your ability to raise capital, raise equity for your deals will uh, directly impact on how, how big you can grow this thing. And when I first started in multifamily real estate, or I, I would just I would just say real estate investing in general, way back in the day when I was doing the single family home stuff, I had a lot of misconceptions about raising money for deals and how deals actually were put together. You know, I had the mindset that, you know, you had to save up all your money and then you invested it in a deal. So you uh, put all that capital in a deal and then you waited for it and then you could refinance and then do the next one. Um, or you had to wait and save up a whole lot more and then uh, purchase the next one. That's how I, I did my single family home investing. I didn't understand that there was a totally different way to do things that not only would expedite the, the scale, like get, do it a whole lot faster, but also uh, you know break down those walls that I was encountering, especially when it came to financing and equity that was needed to expand uh, the portfolio. So, you know, I, I would drive by uh, apartment buildings and I would look at them and think, oh, well, you had to be a loaded, rich insurance company. You had to be a very wealthy family who had multiple, 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 multiple businesses and millions and millions of dollars. I would think you had to be a big corporation to acquire these apartment buildings. I didn't realize how apartment buildings were actually funded and how individual people could not only do the deals, but also invest in the buildings. I was very ignorant. Actually, one of the first people, and which is why I invited Joel on here today, one of the first people who opened my eyes to that world is Joel Block. Uh, I, I remember I was doing a podcast, one of my very first episodes, and I was doing a whole lot of learning in real estate. And I had Joel on and uh, he came highly recommended. And uh, we had a conversation after the episode. And he's like, hey, I, I'm going to show you some stuff. And uh, he basically broke things down. I, I met him um, in Philadelphia and he basically taught me um, how Wall Street raises money extremely well, extremely efficiently, and how I could use that in real estate. So I owe Joel a big uh, debt of uh, gratitude. Oh, hello, hello, Kitchener, Kitchener, Ontario, home of the Kitchener Rangers. I have uh, I've spent many a day in the odd uh, refereeing the Kitchener Rangers. Now I'm washed up, but that was back in my younger years. So I owe Joel a big debt of gratitude for opening my eyes, and that's what I want to do for you today. Like I, I want to show you how the professionals actually raise equity, how they raise money, how the, how how their mindset is, how they go about doing it, and how they deploy that money in a deal. And that's exactly what Joel's going, Joel's going to be talking about. But first, I, I was running stats. Like with these live streams, I always like to pull up some interesting stats. And I learn things every single week because I, I don't know this stuff uh, just to share with you. So let's head over to the whiteboard. This, this is going to blow your mind today. Actually, every week I have mind-blowing stats. Uh, so the amount of money out there is crazy. So the question is, where is the money you need? Like, where's my money? You, you need money to do a real estate deal. Is the money actually out there looking for a deal? Where do you find it? All that sort of stuff. Well, the money is definitely out there. So uh, let's call this, where's my money? This could be a regular segment. Where's my money? Okay. So interesting stat number one. So uh, global private equity fundraising is up 20%. So I'm looking at 2021 numbers because 2022 hasn't completed yet. But global private equity fundraising was up 20% in 2021. And the total amount fundraised was $1.2 trillion. Now this is on a global level. $1.2 trillion dollars was raised for private equity. That is a huge amount of money. Now, um, private equity also, they raised 1.2 trillion, but they deployed in 2021, they deployed $3.5 trillion. We are talking huge money in this case, right? 20, uh, up 20% 20, uh, in 2021 coming off of COVID, or I can't even say that on YouTube because I might get uh, blocked, but, uh, you know, what happened, the, the lockdown, uh, up 20% in 2021, $1.2 trillion raised, but they deployed as a sector, private equity deployed $3.5 trillion in private equity deals. Now, when I say private equity, we're talking debt, we're talking real estate, we're talking uh, business, all, all, the, all of those sectors combined. But 
in North America for real estate. So a total of $120 billion was raised for real estate. And, and this is for uh, money seeking to invest in U.S.-based real estate. $120 billion was raised in 2021, and that was up 48% from 2020. And globally, so this is just U.S.-focused money looking to take down U.S. real estate deals. $120 billion was fundraised in 2021. Globally, $176 billion was raised on a global level for real estate. So there is a massive, massive, massive amount of money. There's a pool of money out there to tap into. Now, looking ahead, right? Because uh, the market is shifting right now and it is uh, presenting a whole lot of opportunity for people. And uh, the private equity space, the people raising these funds, they know something's up. So let, let me just walk you through this. So in terms of dry powder, so when I say dry powder and when somebody else says dry powder, it actually goes back um, to the era of flintlock, flintlock muskets. I'm going to uh, you know, give you a little taste of my history uh, geekiness right here. So basically flintlock musket, you pull the trigger, a piece of flint goes down, it, it strikes, right? That's the hammer, it strikes the, the steel. It ignites a little bit of gunpowder in the pan and that goes in to, to actually ignite the charge and then the uh, the bullet fires. That's how a flintlock uh, musket works. But if you got stuck in the rain, the powder in your pan would be wet and then you couldn't fire your musket. So that's where the term dry powder comes from. So basically dry powder is the powder you're sitting in reserve. It's ready to rock and roll. It's really rock and roll. It's ready to explode. So in terms of dry powder right now for U.S. focused real estate, there uh, in 2021, at the end of that year, there was a total of $215 billion sitting there, not in a deal, sitting there waiting for opportunity. So, so private equity had $215 billion of money just sitting there waiting for an opportunity. And now with the market starting to shift, this money is starting to be deployed. So globally, so this is just US focused real estate. Globally, there is $1.6 trillion sitting there waiting to be deployed on a global level. This is the dry powder of private equity, uh, private equity right now. And just to give you a taste of some of the really big heavy hitters and what they're doing right now, Blackstone, Everybody knows Blackstone. If you don't, they are a beast in the space. So in 2021, they deployed $25.3 billion and they raised $33.5 billion. So they raised more money than they actually needed because this was sitting in their dry powder reserve. So right now, there is so much capital just waiting for opportunity. Now, the question is, where are you going to find your money? Because Blackstone... Like real estate is a very fragmented industry, right? So if you look at only the the top the the top uh, real estate holders in multifamily, you know you've got the big companies like Blackstone and and the other big ones, but real estate as a whole is very fragmented. You've got a ton of mom and pops holding real estate. So the question is, you know, the big boys do things at, at the top, but there's a whole lot of money there waiting for opportunity in the mom and pop space. You don't have to be a huge life insurance company. You don't have to be a huge conglomerate to wrap up these deals. You can do it yourself. And that's exactly what I'll be going through with Joel Block in just a little bit. How can you tap into this dry powder reserve right here? $215 billion just sitting there waiting for a deal. 1.6 trillion globally just waiting for a deal. If you could only get a small, 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 tiny piece of this $1.6 trillion, you can use that to fund your real estate portfolio. And that is exactly how the pros approach raising capital. And we'll be going in their systems and their funnels and how they actually do that. Hey, thanks for watching. I've got two other great clips for you to watch right over here. And let me know what you think. Leave a comment, hit the like button. It really helps out the channel. And until next time, happy investing.